I'll just do my bit of blurb. Welcome to Kitely English Book Club and uh, we're reading Five Children and It. Uh, what chapter are we actually on now? Does anybody know? Um, about chapter four? No, chapter three. Okay, we're on chapter three. So today's reading group is Eleanor, uh, followed by April, followed by Tough Guy, then Moz and then Shiny. Okay, if anybody needs to leave early, um, you'll have to ask or negotiate with your fellow book readers uh, <laughs> if you need to move up or down a place. Okay, <laughs> so Eleanor, whenever you're ready, if you would like to start reading. Uh, I'm ready. Can you hear me? Okay. Siri, still crouching in the dust, waddled on bent legs to the side of the carriage, fast, farthest from the battlefield. He unfastened the door of the carriage. The two men were far too much occupied with the quarrel to notice anything, took the lamb in his arms, and, still stooping, carried the sleeping baby a dozen yards along the road to where a stile led into a wood. The others followed, and there among the hazels and young oaks and sweet chestnuts covered by high strong scented brake fern, they all lay hidden till the angry voices of the men were hushed at the angry voice of the red and white white lady, and after a long and anxious search the carriage at last drove away. My only heart! said Siri, drawing a deep breath at the sound of wheels, at last died away. Everyone does want him now, and no mistake, that some yard has done us again, tricky brute, for any sake let's get the kid safe home. So they peeped out, and finding on the right hand only lonely white road, and nothing but lonely white road on the left, they took courage, and the road, and they are carrying the sleeping lamb. Adventures dogged their footsteps. A boy with a bundle of fagots on his back dropped his bun by the roadside and asked to look at the baby and then offered to carry him. But Antia was not to be caught that way, that way twice. They all walked on, but the boy followed, and Siri and Robert couldn't make him go away till they had more than once invited him to smell their fists. Afterwards, a little girl in a blue and white checked pinafore actually followed them for a quarter of a mile crying for the precious baby, and then she was only got rid, by, uh, got rid of by threads of tying her to a tree in the wood with all the pocket hand handkerchiefs. So that bears can come and eat you as soon as it gets dark, said Siri severely. Then she went off crying. It presently seemed wise to the brothers and sisters of the baby who was wanted by everyone to hide in the hedge whenever they saw anyone coming, and thus they managed to prevent the lamb from arousing the inconvenient affection of a milkman, a stand breaker, and a man who drove a cart with a paraffin barrel at the back of it. They were nearly home when the worst thing of all happened. Turning a corner suddenly they came upon two vans, a tent, and a company of gypsies en encamped by the side of the road. The vans were hung all round with wicker chairs and cradles, and flower stands and feather brushes, brushes. A lot of ragged children were industrious, industriously making dust pies in the road. Two men lay on the grass smoking, and three women were doing the family washing in an old red watering can with the top broken off. In a moment, every gypsy, men, women, and children surrounded Antia and the baby. Let me help him, little lady, said one of the gypsy women, who had a mahogany-colored face and dust-colored hair. I went her, her, had a hair of his head 
the little picture. I'd rather not, said Antia. Let me have him, said the other woman, whose face was also of the hue of mahogany and her hair jet, uh, jet black in greasy curls. I've nineteen of my own, so I have it. So I have. No, said Antia bravely, but her heart beat so that it nearly choked her. Then one of the men pushed forward. Save me if it ain't, he cried, my own long lost child. Have he a strawberry mark on his left ear? No? Then he's my own baby, stolen from me in innocent infancy. And I'm ever, and I not have the law on ye this time. He snatched the baby from Antia, who turned scarlet and burst into tears of pure rage. The others were, were standing quite still. This was much the most terrible thing that had ever happened to them. Even being taken up by the police in Rochester was nothing to this. Say so was quite white, and his hands trembled a little, but he made a sign to the others to shut up. He was silent a minute, thinking hard. Then he said, We don't want... Okay, okay, stop. Oh, alarm. Okay. Child here. Ah. There's a bundle. Bundle. Yeah, 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 bears, yeah, teddy bear, oh, bears, yeah, yeah. when? No, no, no. Wend, wend, is it better? Wound, wound, wound. Yeah, bushes, brushes, bushes, brushes. Ah, him, ah, him. Okay. Yeah, bu uh, brushes, bushes. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have noticed. <laughs> brush, bush. Yeah. yeah, there is a word, a swell up. I think. What does it? What does he want to say? Actually? Swallop, swallop. Uh, I have to find it again. Okay. Uh huh. Thank you.
Oh, okay. That's why I can't find the any translation. Right, hang on. So, um, if there are no other questions, let me just go through that because that didn't record. Hang on. It should be bundle, bears, not beers, won't, not weren't. Hand him over means hand him over. And though we say brushes, we say bushes. Okay. Um, so, and swelp is just slang so help me if it isn't it's just badly pronounced so help me uh, swelp me if it ain't so help me if it isn't it's a, like an exclamation good grief what a surprise <laughs> okay april whenever you're ready okay thank you we don't want to keep him if he's yours but you see he's used to us you shall have him if you want him. No, no, cried Antia, and C Cyril glared at her. Of course we want him, said the women, trying to get the baby out of the man's arms. The lamp howled loudly. Oh, he's hurt, shrieked Antia and Cyril, in a savage undertone, in a savage undertone, bade her stop it. Oh. In a savage undertone, bade her, stop it. You trust to me, he whispered. Look here, he went on. He's awfully tiresome with people he doesn't know very well. Suppose we stay here a bit till he gets used to you. And then when it's bedtime, I give you my word of honor. We'll go away and let you keep him if you want to. And then when we're gone, you can decide with it, which of you is to have him, as you all want him so much. That's fair enough, said the man who was holding the baby, trying to loosen the red neckerchief which the lamp had caught hold of and drawn round his mahogany, mahogany throat so tight that he could hardly breathe. The gypsies whispered together, and Cyril took the chance to whisper to. He said, Sunset, we'll get away then. And then his brothers and sisters were filled with wonder and admi ad admiration, admi admiration at his having been so clever as to remember this. Oh, do let him come to us, said Jane. See, we will sit down here and take care of him for you till he gets used to you. What about dinner? said Robert suddenly. The, the others looked at him with scorn. Fancy brothering about your beastly dinner when you're ber... Uh, I mean when the baby... Jane whispered hot, hotly. Robert carefully winked at her and went on. You won't mind my just running home to get our dinner? he said to the gypsy. I can bring it out here in a basket. His brothers and sisters felt themselves very noble and despised him. They did not know his thoughtful secret intention, but the gypsies did in a minute. Oh yes, they said, and then fetched the police with a pack of lies about it being your baby instead of ours. Did you ever catch a weasel asleep? They ask, if you are hungry, you can pick it a bit long along of us, said the light-haired gypsy woman, not unkindly. Here, Levi, that blessed, kill, that blessed kid, kid will howl all his buttons off. Give him to the little lady and let's see if they can't get him used to us a bit. So the lamp was handed back, but the gypsies crowded so closely that he could not possibly stop howling. Then the man with the red handkerchief said, 
Here, Pharaoh, make up the fire, and you girls sit to the pot. Give, give the kid a chance. So the gypsies, very much against their will, went off to their work, and, their, and the children and the lamb were left sitting on the grass. He'll be all right at sunset, Jane whispered. But oh, it's awful. Suppose they are frightfully angry with, when they come to their senses. They might beat us or leave us tied to trees or something. No, they won't, Antia said. Oh, my lamb, don't cry anymore. It's all right. Panties got a oh, ducky. They aren't unkind people, or they wouldn't be going to give us any dinner. Dinner, said Robert. I won't touch their nasty dinner. It would choke me. The others thought so, so too then. But when the dinner was ready, it turned out to be supper and happened between four and five, they were all glad enough. They were all glad enough to take what they could get. It was boiled rabbit with onions and some bird rather like a chicken, but stringler about its legs and with a stronger taste. The lamb had bread soaked in hot water and brown sugar sprinkled on the top. He liked this very much and consented to let the two gypsy women feed him with it as he sat on Antia's lap. All that long hot afternoon, Robert and Cyril had an and Antia and Jane had to keep the lamp amused and happy while the gypsies looked eagerly on. By the time the shadows grew long and black across the, mid the meadows, he had really taken to the, to the woman with the light hair and even consented to kiss his hand to the children and to stand up and, and bow with his hand on his chest, like a gentleman, to the two men. The, two, the whole gypsy camp was in raptures with him, and his brothers and sisters could not help taking some pleasure in showing off his accomplishments to an audience so interested and enthusiastic, but they longed for sunset. Well done. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Well done. Yeah. Good. Good okay. job. Yeah. Well done. Nicely read. So, a couple of words for you. Oh, hang on. Wrong word. Okay. Let me just uh, cut and paste. And you get two smileys. <laughs> Okay, so the first one is loosen. Try not to get the z from lose. Lose to lose has that stronger S. Okay, loosen has a soft S. So it's not loosen. Loosen. Try it. Loosen. That's better. Good. And then I think you said something like, I think it was mixed, you mixed up brother and bother. And it came out, to me, it sounded a bit like brothering, bothering, bothering, to bother, to be bothered. Try it. Bothering. That's it. Uh, the next one, you definitely went French on me. <laughs> it's onions. Do you know your onions? What did I say then? Onions. Like on. It's not. It's on. It's the schwa. Onions. Okay. Ah, okay. Okay. Onions. Onions, that's it. Um, do you know what it means, actually, if I say you know your onions? You know what to do? Yeah, you know you know the subject, you know the, the thing. You know your onions when it comes to English, April. <laughs> Unfortunately, not when it comes to bow or bow. You stopped, you thought, and you used the wrong one. Sorry, it's bow, to bow, like a gentleman. Okay, bow. Yeah, sorry. Uh, bow. <laughs> it's a really tough one, I know. Uh, and then audience, not our audience. Audience. That's it, good. And I just confirm that you were correct when you corrected yourself here. Admiration from to admire, but admiration. And mahogany. Now, does everybody know what mahogany means? What What is mahogany? Do you know? 
a tree. Yep, it's a tree and it's a kind uh, of wood. It's a color, uh, the deep brown. And it's brown. a color. Yep, it's a deep russet, deep. ready brown. Because it comes from a tree called mahogany and the wood is called mahogany. It's a hard wood. And um, much as it would, if you look at the table next to April, there's a, um, a box on the table. Okay, so the table looks like it's made of oak. Uh, but the box on the table with the buttons and the thread and the pins and needles, that's probably made of mahogany. It's an expensive wood, okay? But if you call it as a colour, it's a deep russet brown, okay? Ready brown. It is a beautiful colour, yes, it is. Strangely, mahogany furniture goes in and out of fashion in the UK. You know, at some point you'll be able to buy it really cheaply, uh, second hand or in an auction and the next year it'll be extremely expensive the same with oak they kind of go these brown woods um, they go in and out of fashion but I, I love uh, both I've got a mahogany rocking chair from my mother and I've got an oak desk uh, which we bought from Oakland <laughs> yeah, I much prefer wood to plastic or MDF or anything like that so, any questions before we move on? No? Um, it is an expensive wood, yes. Oh, you say no, April, or no questions? <laughs> no, no questions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's an expensive wood, and uh, it's a controlled wood now, I think. Uh, because, of course, the rainforests, mahogany is not na a native tree to the UK. Uh, it's usually imported from tropical countries. And uh, to stop illegal logging, it should always be uh, tagged and um, bought through proper sustainable uh, forestry. Hopefully. Okay, then the next person to read is Tough Guy. Tough Guy, are you ready to read? Hi, Tough. Are you there? Hello. Hello. <laughs> Good. Yeah. So, are you ready? Yes, I am. Excellent. Uh, so, take it away. He, he consented to let the two gypsy women feed him. We are getting into the habit of longing for sunset, Cyril whispered. How I do wish we could wish something really sensible that would be of some use, so that we should be quiet. Sorry when sunset came. The shadows got longer and longer, and at last there, there were no separate shadows anymore, but one soft blowing shadow over everything. For the sun was out of sight behind the hill, but he had not really set yet. The people who make the laws about lightning, lighting, sorry, lighting, bicycle, bicycle lamps are the people who decide when the sun sets. She has to do it to, to the minute or they would know the reason why. But the gypsies were getting impatient. Now, young uns, the red handkerchief man said, it's time you were, you were laying off your heads on your pillows. So it is. The kid's all right and friendly with us now. So you just hand him over and get home, like you said. The women and children came crowding round the lamp. Arms were held out, fingers snapped, invitingly. Friendly faces beaming with admiring smiles, but all failed to tempt the loyal, loyal lamp. He clung with arms and legs to Jane, who happened to be holding him, and uttered the gloomiest roar of the whole day. It's no good, the women said. Hand the little puppet over miss, while well, soon quiet him, and still the sun would not set. Tell her about how to put him to bed, whispered Cyril, anything to gain, uh, anything to gain time and be ready to bolt when the sun really does make up its silly old mind to say, Yes, I'll land him. I'll land him over in just one minute. Anthea began uh, talking very fast. But do let me just tell you, 
he he has a warm bath every night and cold in the morning and he has a crockery rabbit uh, to go in the warm bath with him and little samuel saying his prayers in white china on a red cushion for the cold bath and he hates you to wash his ears but you must and if you let the soap get into his eyes the lamb lamb kais said he he had stopped roaring to listen the women laughed as if i hadn't never uh, bat a baby she said come give us a hold of him come to melia my precious gwe uh, yujis uh, reply replied the lamb at once yes but anthea went on about his meals you really must let me tell you he has an apple or banana every morning and bread and milk for breakfast and an egg for his tea sometimes and i have i have brought up 10 said the black uh, ringleted women besides the others come miss and i am over i can be here no longer i just must give him a hug we ain't settled yet who's who's he's to be Esther said one of the one of the men it won't be you Esther uh, with seven of am at your tail already i am so sure of that said Esther's husband and ain't i nobody to have a say neither said the husband of amelia zila the girl said and me i am a single girl and no one but i am to look after i ought to have him hold your tongue shut your mouth don't you show me no more of of your impertinence everyone was getting very angry the dark gypsy faces were frowning and anxious looking suddenly a change swept over them as if some invisible sponge had uh, wiped away wiped away those sorry these cross and anxious expressions and left only a blank the children saw them uh, saw that this sun Uh, really had said but they were afraid to move and the gypsies were feeling so muddled because of the invi- invisible sponge that had washed washed all the feelings of the last few hours out of their hearts that they could not say a word the children hardly dared to breathe suppose the gypsies when the when they recovered speech should be furious to think how silly they had been all day it was an awkward moment suddenly anthea greatly daring held out the lamp to the red handkerchief man here he is she said the man drew back i shouldn't like to deprive you miss he said hoarsely he said hoarsely anyone anyone who like who likes can have a my share of him said the other man after all i have got enough of my own said esther He is a nice little chap uh, though said Amelia she said the only one who now looked affectionately at the uh, whimpering lamb Zila said if i don't think i must have had a touch of the sun i don't want him then shall we take him away said Anthea well suppose you do said Par- Paro heartily and uh, will will say no more about it and with great uh, haste all the gypsies began to be be busy about their tents for the night all but amelia she went with the children as as far as the band in the road and there she said let me give him a kiss miss i do not know what made what made us go for to uh, behave so silly as gypsies don't steal babies uh, whatever they may tell you when you are naughty we have enough of our own mostly but i have lost all mine she leaned she leaned towards the lamp and he looking he looking in her eyes unexpectedly put up a grubby soft paw and stroked her face poor poor she said the lamp and he let the gypsy women kiss him and what is more he kissed her a uh, brown cheek in return a very nice kiss as all his kisses are uh, are and not a wet one 
like some baby's gift. The gypsy woman moved her finger about on his forehead as if she had been writing something there. And the same with his chest and his hands and his feet. Then she said, may he, may, may he be brave and have the strong head to think with and the strong heart to live with and the strong arms to work with and the strong feet to travel with and always come safe home to his own. Then she said something in a strange language no one could understand and suddenly added, well, I must be saying so long and glad to have made you acquaintance. And she turned and went back to her home, the tent by the grassy, grassy uh, roadside. Very the good. children. Okay, that's it. Okay. Yeah, well done. <laughs> um, let me just do one little bit towards the end and then I will give you your correction. So. Uh, there's quite a lot of sort of slang and what I'd call naturally spoken English here, um, which starts with young'uns. You young'uns, in my day, you young'uns, we didn't have any computers in my day. <laughs> which means it's just basically uns is slang for ones, young ones, young'uns basically means you young people. OK, but it would be said young'uns. Try it. Don't forget to read. Yeah, young'uns. Okay, young'uns. That's it. Very good. And then wheel. If you notice, there's an apostrophe there. So wheel is okay, short yeah. form for? We will. We will. Yeah, so we'll do this. We'll do that. It sounds just like wheel, to be honest. Oh, yeah. The wheel on the bus go round wheel. and round. <laughs> So be careful if you just watch out for apostrophes when you see it and you'll know it's not well. It's we'll, we will. Then crockery, yeah. crockery. Crockery. Yeah, the crockery. Um, if you look at the table over by the wall, the crockery is the plates, the serving plates, anything, uh, the dishes. Yeah, they're all crockery. Okay. Do you know what the term is for all the knives, forks and spoons? Uh, no. Cutlery. OK, yes, well done. Not cultery, cutlery, okay, cutlery. Yeah. yeah. And you think about you use a knife to cut yeah. cutlery. <laughs> so crockery is your dishes, your plates, etc. Um, and your cutlery or your knives, your forks, your spoons, etc. Okay, next one. Okay. Again, this is baby talk. Like something you miss out on. It's the sort of thing, uh, go away, Uggsy. Uggsy. <laughs> Uggsy. Any ideas what it might have been saying? Uggsy, the baby, what it might have been trying to say? Any idea? Ugly. Ugly, maybe, yeah. Uggsy. <laughs> but it's baby speak. Now, another one where people drop their H's. And if you notice again, there's an apostrophe. So it's not I'm. I'm would have the apostrophe where the A is missing. And it should be a capitalised okay. I. This, the apostrophe is at the beginning and it's a small I. So it's not I'm, it's im. It's M. dropping your H for him. Him. Uh, oh, okay. look at him. Look, look at him. I'm warning you because K's, T's, H's can all be dropped in spoken English. So if, if you hear somebody saying, look at him, what they're saying is look at him. <laughs> yeah, your brain gets used to it. It fills in the missing letters. So him, him. Okay. Okay. Uh, then daring, not daring, daring, to dare. Daring. Daring, yeah. You've got that ing at the end. Try again. Daring. Daring. Better. And then pharaoh. The Egyptian kings, they were pharaohs. Pharaoh. Try it. Pharaohs. Yeah, 
That's it. Fair and then heartily. Not heartily, heartily. Heartily. Yes, when you eat heartily, you eat with a lot of enthusiasm and you eat a lot of food. Yeah, got a hearty appetite. He's eating heartily. Now, this next one, you're going to have to practice tough. You've definitely got a problem with woman singular. So the woman. Okay, woman. And women women. plural. Woman, women. And what you're saying, what you were saying all the time was women the women and that it, sometimes okay. it was women because sometimes it was talking about the group of women and other times it was talking about Amelia or the other way Zith, 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 oh, I can't remember the names but they were talking about the individual women so it would be woman for a single woman and women for the group okay okay yeah and then uh, to make your acquaintance very formal Nice to make your acquaintance, but it's your, not you, your acquaintance. Try it. Your acquaintance. Yeah, not you. Well, you can say you some places, but your is is better. Your. Your acquaintance. Yeah. Yes, that's what I said. Your. Okay, you, you heard it, you. <laughs> your. It's like or. Okay, days, your, your, your that's better. Yeah. When you listen, to, if you listen to, if you, if you ever think, I'm saying that, have a listen to the recording and see what you hear. Because recording yourself, you might hear what I hear. Maybe it's my ears. Maybe I need to wash my ears out. But I don't think so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> but nicely read. Well done. What does that game call? Uh, what is that game called again, Lynn? Daring or? What game? Yeah, uh, you you challenge somebody to do something. Truth or dare? Or I... Truth or dare? Ah, okay. That's the only one I can think of. Truth or dare? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. You you can tell the truth about a secret or something, or you have to do a dare. You have to carry out a, an action like you know, go and ring that doorbell and then run away. That kind of dare. Is that what you're thinking of? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's okay. One okay. <laughs> Any other questions? No? Okay then, who's next to read? Let me just have a look. Um, and next to read is Moz. Moz, have you got voice? I can't see. Uh, hello. hello? Hello. Hello, hello. I have good. good. Oh. So, as soon as you're ready, uh, if you'd like to start reading. Uh, okay, okay, Lynn. Uh, the children looked after till she was out of sight. Then, Rob- then Robert said, "How silly of her! Even sunset didn't put her right." What rot she talked? Well, said Cyril, "If you ask me, I think it was rather decent of her." Decent, said Anthea. It was very nice, indeed, of her. I think she's a dear. She's just too frightfully nice for anything, said Jane. And they went home very late for tea and unspeakably late for dinner. Martha scolded, and of course, but the lamp was safe. I say, it turned out we wanted the lamp as much as anyone, said Robert later of course but do you feel different about it now the sun's the the sun's set no said all the others together then it's lasted over sunset with us no it hasn't Cyril explained the wish didn't do anything to us we always wanted him with all our hearts and we were we were our 
proper ourselves. Only we were all pigs this morning, especially you, Robert. Robert, Robert bore this much with a strange calm. I certainly thought I didn't want him this morning, he, he said he. Perhaps I was a pig, but everything looked so different. But when we thought we were going to lose him, and that, my dear children, is the moral of this chapter, I did not mean it to have a moral, but morals are nasty forward beings, and will keep putting in their oars where they are not wanted, and since the moral has crept in quite against my wishes, you might as well think of, of it next time you feel piggy yourself and want to get rid of any of your brothers and sisters. I hope this doesn't, doesn't often happen, but I dare say it has happened sometimes even to you chapter uh, for weeks the next day was very wet too wet to go out and too and far too wet to think of disturbing a uh, sand fairy so sensi sensitive to water that he still after thousands of years felt the pain of once having his left whisker wetted, wetted, it was a long day, and it was not till the afternoon that all the children suddenly decided to to write letters to their mother. It was Robert who had the misfortune to upset the ink well, an unusually deep and full one straight into that part of Anthea's desk where she had long pretended that an arrangement of milky thatch <laughs> and cardboard painted with Indian ink was a secret drawer. It was not exactly Robert's, Robert's fault. It was only his m misfortune that he chanced to be lifting the ink across the deck just at the moment when Anthea had got it open and that that same moment should have been the one chosen by the lamp to get under the table and break his cre squeaking bird. There was a sharp convenient wire inside the bird and of course the lamp ran the wire into Robert's leg at once. Robert's leg at once. And so, without anyone's meaning to do it, the secret drawer was flooded with, with ink. At the, at the same time, a stream was poured over Anthea's half-finished letter, so that letter, so that her letter was something like this. Darling mother, I hope you are quite well, and I hope Granny is better. The other day we then came a flood of ink and at the bottom these words in pencil it was not me upset the ink but it took such it took such time such a time clearing up so no more as it is post time from your loving daughter Anthea Robert's letter had not even been begun he had been drawing a ship on the blotting paper while he was trying to think of what to say and of course after the ink was upset he had to help Anthea to clean out her desk and he promised to make her another secret drawer better than the other and she said well make it now so it was post time and his letter wasn't done and the secret drawer wasn't done either. Very good. Serial what? Okay, well done. <laughs> Nicely read. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you. Don't cry over spilt 
Well, actually, we normally say don't cry over spilt milk, but I guess this one would have to be don't cry over spilt ink. Because <laughs> nobody uses ink like that anymore. Well, very, very few people use ink like that anymore. Thank goodness. We all use biros now. <laughs> OK, so a couple of words for you, Moz. Uh, the first one, oh. <laughs> proper, proper. Oh, oh OK, uh, proper. That's, you've just got to get the pro. Otherwise, if it sounds like popper, popper would be uh, like a party proper. popper. Proper. Proper. Good. And then, uh, um, hang on, next one. I think you just misread it, but it's desk, not deck. Desk. No, okay, uh, desk. That's it, good. Uh, then this one, again, might have been a misread, but it's these. You've got to get the long E, because these is plural. These. Not this. The, okay. These. Yeah. So, <laughs> I always forgot that. I know. It's, it's a tricky one. But it is. it means these things in front of me rather than this thing in front of me. Okay. Okay. And then just this is about the intonation, the way to read this sentence. Martha scolded, of course, but the lamb was safe. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, Martha scolded, of course, but the lamp was safe. That's it. So it's like saying Martha was angry, of course she was, but the main thing was the lamp was safe. Okay, good. Any questions? Uh, thank you, Lynn. You're welcome, Mars. What is a rub here, Lynn? Uh, in the <laughs> I have found it nonsense. Yeah, nonsense. Am I right? Yeah. Where? Where, where in the thing? Does it say something like what rot? Uh, or? About Amelia, this uh, gypsy lady. Oh uh, yes, yeah. She, what rot? She what talked rubbish? To rot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What utter rot? Yeah, rot here just means I don't believe any of it. It's nonsense. Um, what rubbish? Okay. Okay, and um, uh, feel piggy. I feel piggy. Yeah, it's just he's feeling like a pig. Yeah, have you been? Huh? How 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 is that? <laughs> what is that? Well, if we call somebody how a pig, it's not nice. <laughs> Don't be such a pig. It means being mean and nasty. It's a bit unfair to piggies, but um, yeah, uh, it's a kiddie word. You might. It's like kiddie swear word, if you like. Oh, you utter pig. It means don't be a swine as well. Okay. We use the word swine as well. Just behaving badly. Okay. Okay. And they said here uh, the ink upset or something like that. What is that upset here? D uh, dry? Become dry? or No, no, no. It means to fall, oh, no, to no. Push, to, um, fall over. If you upset a glass, you knock it over. Okay. Ah, okay. So it means all the ink ran out, and it said it was a full bottle of ink. So all the ink, all the ink ran ran out of the bottle, all over the letters into the drawer, ruining everything, because somebody upset it. Not to make it feel upset; it has no feelings, but to knock it over. Okay. Okay. And what about the pronunciation of this one? Let's have a look. To pour. Pour, yeah? Uh, yeah, because pour. I, I, still, I thought that most you said the poor, no? Pour. pour, is that okay? Well, pour, pour, pour. Pour, pour, pour. 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 And pour. They're, they're lov three lovely synonyms, yeah? Uh, three lovely homophones, I mean. <laughs> Not synonyms. <laughs> no, they're three homophones. They all sound the same. Pour, pour, pour. So uh, he had to pour milk over his poor hot pour. Okay. Uh, in fact, I'll change that. Okay, so he had to pour cold water over his poor hot pour. He had to pour. Cold water over her poor hot pole. 
Yeah, no. his, but yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> but the last one is a little bit different, I no, think. No, not really. No. If you listen, he had to pour cold water over his poor hot paw. <laughs> Total silence from that April. <laughs> If you have a look at the um, homophones, yeah, you've got poor and poor. And poor. I'm just checking, even if the Americans agree with me. Yeah. Poor, 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 poor. There you go. Okay. Okay, thank, uh, Lynn, thank you. You're welcome. So, I know it seems ridiculous, but it's English pronunciation and I can only apologise yet again. <laughs> okay, so, uh, Shiny, are you ready to read? Shiny, shiny, shiny. Uh, nostalgic. Oh yes, if you're feeling nostalgic for something, you're you're thinking about the good old days. You're thinking about the past and thinking how wonderful it was. Yeah. So a lot of people are nostalgic for their um, for their childhood because they forget all the bad things that happened. <laughs> <laughs> and they just think it was always just wonderful time. Yeah. Sunshine and lollipops. And they forget all the troubled times. <laughs> okay. So, Shani, have you got voice? Yes. Yay! So, whenever you're ready, you ready to start reading. Okay. Zero wrote a long letter, letter very fast and then went to set a trap where slugs that he had read about in the homemade gardener. And when it was past time, the letter could not be found and it never was found. Perhaps the slugs ate it. Jane's letter was the only one that went. She meant to, to tell her mother all about the summit. In fact, they had all meant to do this, but she spent so long thinking how to spell the word, the word that there was no time to tell the story properly. And it is useless to tell a story unless you do tell it properly. So she had to be contented, con contented with this. My dear mother, dear, we are all as, as good as we can, like you told us to. And the lamp has a little cold, but Martha says it's nothing. Only he upset the goldfish into himself yesterday morning. When we were up at the sun pit the other day, we went around we went round by the safe way where cars go and we found that half an hour went by before Jen felt quite sure that they could none of them them spell summit and they could not find it in the dictionary either though they looked then Jen hastily finished her letter we found a strange thing, but it is nearly past time. Past time. So no more at present from your little girl, Jen. P.S. If you could have a wish come true, what would you have? Then the postman was heard blowing his horn, and Robert rushed out in the rain to stop his cart and give him the letter. 
and that was how it happened that, though all the children meant to tell their mother about the sun fairy, somehow or other she never got to know. There were other reasons why she never got to know, but these, these, come later. The next day, Uncle Richard came and took him all to Maidstone in the wagon net, all except the lamb. Uncle Richard was very best kind of uncle. He bought them toys at Maidstone. He took them into a shop and that them choose exactly what they wanted without any restrictions about price and no nonsense about things being instructive. It is very wise to let children choose exactly what they like because they are very foolish and inexperienced and sometimes they will choose a really instructive thing without meaning to. This happened to Robert who chose uh, at the last moment and in a great hurry. A box with pictures on it of winged boats with men's hats and winged men with eagles' hats. He thought there would be animals inside, the same as on the box. When he got it home, it was a Sunday puzzle about ancient elf. The others chose in haste and were happy a danger. Cyril had a model engine and the girls had two dolls, as well as a china tea set with forget-me-nots on it to be between them. The boys between them with bow and arrows. Then Uncle Richard took them on the beautiful mad way in the boat. And then they all had tea at the beautiful pastry cooks. And when they reached home, it was far too late to have any wishes that day. They did not tell Uncle Richard anything about the Sammy. I do not know why, and they do not know why, but I dare say you can guess. The day after Uncle Richard had behaved so handsomely was a very hot day indeed. The people who decide what the weather it's to be and put put its orders done for it in the newspapers every morning said afterwards that it was the hottest day there had been for it yes they had ordered it to be warmer some showers and warmer it certainly was in fact it was so busy being warmer that it had no time to attend to the odor about showers. So there wasn't any. Very good, well done. Okay. Um, I think I'll just add one little word at the end because I'm sure I heard a slight um, mispronunciation there, but I might have to listen to it again. But anyway, let's have a look. Okay, so a um, couple of familiar errors here. Uh, the first one, T and D. Remember T, lots of air coming from your teeth, and D, not so much air. D, T. D is a little bit further back on the palate as well. D, D, T, T. Tongue comes forward. So it's contented, not contended. Okay. Contented. Try it. Contented. That's it. Yay. Okay. 
Then round, that long round. owl you don't like. Oh. Round, round and round, the around the rugged rock, the ragged rascal ran. Round, ow. Try it. Round. Much better. Then hastily. Have you ever... Oh, sorry, yes, Shiny? No, I just recorded. There is a song, uh, Rihanna. Yes, you bring me right round, uh, baby, yeah. right round, like a record, baby, right round, right round. <laughs> Is it you spin me right round? Is that the one? You spin yeah. me right round, baby, right round. <laughs> okay, so that's a good one, actually, if you want to practice it for karaoke. <laughs> Next week. <laughs> Okay, uh, then the next word, hastily, long A, hastily. Hastily. That's it. And then again, the long A, same. Same. Yeah, and then exactly the opposite to what April said, bow and arrow. Now, if you think arrow, then it's always going to be bow and arrow. Okay. Bow and arrow. Yeah, so think bow and arrow. It will help you. And bow down. So you've got the ow, bow down, bow and arrow, bow. Okay? Because it is a difficult one, I know, but that might help you. Then we've got another long A, pastry. 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 That's it, perfect. And then another long A, newspapers. Papers. Newspapers. Very good. And the last one, I'm not 100% certain I heard a misspelling, but a mispronunciation. How can I hear a misspelling? A mispronunciation, but it's an or, order. 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 That's it, yeah. It sounded a little bit like odour when I heard it, but... Again, I'm not, because it was right at the end and I was getting ready to switch the, um, switch my mic back on. And so I might have misheard it, but I think you said a little bit O rather than OR. Okay. Then you get two smileys. Well done. Letter, later, post time, past time. <laughs> well done. You corrected yourself twice. Good job. Okay, any questions? Yes. yes. Tough. Tough. I have a question, uh, Lynn. Okay, uh, Shiny, uh, could, you, could you mute very quickly? Thank you. Okay, Tough, take okay. it away. Yes, uh, actually, I saw that it was written in the article that uh, she had to be contented, right? So uh, actually, I'm a bit confused because we, we normally we say that uh, I'm content. He was content, right? Mm -hmm. So here it, it's being used as a verb, right? So could you please tell me that uh, how to know that when we have to use it as a noun or when we have to use it as a verb? OK, um, do you mean which, which do you mean content? Content is totally uh, different to be contented. Yeah. Contented. Yeah. Um, to be content is a verb. Content, which is um, uncountable, is the noun. It's not the same word. The content of this lesson, of this session, was uh, five children and it. I hope you are contented with that. Can you hear the difference in pronunciation? Uh, yes. Okay, so yeah, they, they are, these are not homophones, they're the, the frightening words that are spelt the same but pronounced differently. So in order to understand the context, you have to look at the content. <laughs> okay, so uh, you're saying that we can say that, uh, a like, for example, uh, uh, a sentence like, that person had uh, each and everything, okay, he was, he was, Content or contented? What um, we need to say. Well, I, in that case, you could say he felt content or he felt contented. That's a feeling, yes? So if you're peaceful okay, so and happy, yeah. In this case, they're saying she had to be contented with is, is 
emphasizing the fact that it's not really what she, she didn't feel content over that she just had to feel that way she was forced to accept more than um she had to be contented with half the cake not the whole of the cake it's not saying she was happy about it though okay <laughs> so you'll have to be okay. contented with um the end of the lesson because there's nothing you can do about it i'm going to end the lesson you'll have to be contented with that <laughs> But you're probably not content. You probably want more. <laughs> okay, now you might hear it used as a noun, but very, very rarely. Okay. Okay, so it's better to use it as a verb. Yes, um, I mean, absolutely. I mean, you can see it here. You could say, um, uh, phew. I'm just trying to think of an example where you might possibly use it as a noun. Um, it's it's so rare. I would I would stick to thinking it of it as a verb. Um, I was con no, I was content. It was uh, I had to be content. No, that would also be yeah. Oh, I've just seen a spider on my ceiling. <laughs> oh, go away. Yuck. <laughs> I was just leaning back thinking, um, just trying to think, can I do? Yeah, normally it's when it's written, it will be as a noun, it will be content as in the, in, the, con the things within something, the content of something. Uh, let me see if I can find something in the dictionary. See. Okay, yeah, here you go. Oh. Um, a state of satisfaction. The greater part of the century was a time of content. Okay, but that's so blah, that I don't think I've ever even read that. But I know you can say it, but um, according to the dictionary, but I would I would just separate the two. Okay, a time of okay, content. Okay, so uh, we can say that uh, we are contented with uh, whatever you have taught us today. I hope so. <laughs> you can also say I feel contented or I am content. OK, I'm content with the with the session. I hope you all are. I'd rather happy, though. I'm happy with the with the session. I always think when you say content, I think of cows in a field eating grass. They're contented. Yeah. Uh, I always think you should aspire to more as a human being. <laughs> Okay. So on that note, if there are no more. Yeah, the whole cake is better, but it depends on the cake. I would agree. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes you might be quite content to give half of it away or the whole of it away. <laughs> okay. So uh, where are we up to? Have you ever been up at five o'clock on a fine summer morning? That's where we're up to next week, I think. Uh, I will be here next week. It will be the last session for a while. But if anybody were to want to run um, a reading session in this slot, let me know on the forum and I'll put it in the calendar. But as you know, I'm going to be away after next week for a few weeks. OK. OK, so on that note, I will stand up and then I'll log off. Thank you so much for coming. I hope you enjoyed the session. I hope you're content. <laughs> More than content. <laughs> and good question, Tuff. Yeah, but you make me now more confused, uh, Tuff. Because I don't know anymore <laughs> to be content or to be contented. <laughs> you can use both then. Pretty much, yes. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Ah, there you go. You've got you've got Shiny asking Eleanor or April to run the session. Maybe find some short stories or something. Anyway, have a think about it. That'd be lovely, Eleanor, if you could. Uh, I can come. So yeah, I, I would I would choose a short story something. Lovely. Uh, I, I don't remember. You will be absent for two weeks. Uh, Three, so I'm afraid. Sorry for two weeks three okay yeah okay. so, so I, I, and I, I, when i'm away um because we are 
I'm actually going for a wedding in the UK. I'm going uh, right ah, over yeah, for a wedding. Ah, yeah, that's great. Something pleasant. But not a three lo- three week long wedding. So we're, what we're doing because we've got to go over for the wedding. We thought, okay, we'll take our main holiday in July for once. We don't normally do such things as you know. We're normally September people, but um, it's going to be in the middle of the school holidays. Oh my goodness, it's going to be so different. <laughs> And the UK. Oh. <laughs> so, yes, but in the middle of that, we'll be um, at my nephew's wedding, which is really nice. So uh, a nice, a nice, happy time. So, uh, Eleanor, I will put you down as the organiser for that session for two or three weeks. Let, let me know in the forum which ones you can do and I'll put it in the calendar. That's great. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank okay, you. I yeah. will. I will. I will. It give you. It doesn't have to be too short because you've got three weeks. And if you don't finish it in the time, we can always extend it um, for for that time. It won't. Oh, something stream. Oscar Wilde. I I will consider. Yeah. 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 yeah he's okay. he's a good he's a good writer. If you need any help thinking of something, then let me know. But I know you know uh, plenty of uh, literature, so I shall leave it in your capable hands. Just let me know if you do need oh, help. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Well done, shiny. <laughs> Okay. I'm happy, happy, happy. Take care then, everybody. But I'll be here next week. Don't forget. (laughs) Bye. Bye. And nothing but lonely white road on the left. They took courage and the road. And yeah, carrying the sleeping lamb. Adventures dogged their footsteps. A boy with a bundle of fagots on his back dropped his bun by the roadside and asked to look at the baby and then offered to carry him. But Antia was not to be caught that way, that way twice. They all walked on, but the boy followed, and Siri and Robert couldn't make him go away till they had more than once invited him to smell their fists. Afterwards, a little girl in a blue and white checked pinafore actually followed them for a quarter of a mile crying for the precious baby. And then she was only got rid, by, uh, got rid of by threads of tying her to a tree in the wood with all the pocket hand- handkerchiefs. So that bears can come and eat you as soon as it gets dark, said Siri severely. Then she went off crying. It presently seemed wise to the brothers and sisters of the baby who was wanted by everyone to hide in the hedge whenever they saw anyone coming and thus they managed to prevent the lamb from arousing the inconvenient affection of a milkman, a stand breaker and a man who drove a cart with a paraffin barrel at the back of it. They were nearly home when the worst thing of all happened. Turning a corner suddenly, they came upon two vans, a tent, and a company of gypsies encamped by the side of the road. The vans were hung all round with wicker chairs and cradles, and flower stands and feather brushes, brushes. A lot of ragged children were industrious, industriously making dust pies in the road. Two men lay on the grass smoking, and three women were doing the family washing in an old red watering can with the top broken off. In a moment, every gypsy, men, women, and children surrounded Antia and the baby. Let me help him, little lady, said one of the gypsy women, who had a mahogany-colored face and dust-colored hair. I went had a hair of his head, the little picture. I'd rather not, said Antia. Let me have him, said the other woman, whose face was also of the hue of mahogany and her hair jet, la- jet black in greasy curls. I've nineteen of my own, so I have it. So I have no, said Antia bravely, but her heart beat so that it nearly choked her. Then one of the men pushed forward. Save me if it ain't, he cried, my own long lost child. 
Have his strawberry mug on his left, yeah? No? Then he's my aunt Bobby, staring from me in innocent infancy. And I'm ever, and I not have the law on yeah this time. He snatched the baby from Antia, who turned scarlet and burst into tears of pure rage. The others were, were standing quite still. This was much the most terrible thing that had ever happened to them. Even being taken up by the police in Rochester was nothing to this. She was quite white, and his hands trembled a little, but he made a sign to the others to shut up. He was silent a minute, thinking hard. Then he said, We don't want... Okay, okay, stop. Oh, alarm. Oh, okay. Child here. Ah. There's a bundle. Bundle. Yeah, 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 bears, yeah, teddy bear, oh, bears, yeah. yeah, when? No, no, no. Wend, wend, is it better? Wound, wound, wound. Yeah, bushes, 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 bushes. Ah, him. Ah, him. Okay. Yeah, bu uh, brushes, bushes. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have noticed. <laughs> Brush, bush. Yeah. yeah, there is a word, a swallop. I think. What does it? What does he want to say? Swallop. Uh, I have to find it again. Okay. Uh huh. Thank you. Oh, okay, that's why I can't find the uh, any translation.
Right, hang on. So, um, if there are no other questions, let me just go through that because that didn't record. Hang on. It should be bundle, bears, not beers, won't, not weren't. And him over means hand him over. And though we say brushes, we say bushes. Okay. Um, so, and swelp is just slang so help me if it isn't it's just badly pronounced so help me uh, swelp me if it ain't so help me if it isn't it's a, like an exclamation good grief what a surprise <laughs> i'll just do my bit of blurb welcome to kitely english book club and uh, we're reading five children and it uh, what chapter are we actually on now does anybody know um about chapter four no chapter three okay we're on chapter three so today's reading group is eleanor uh followed by april followed by tough guy then moz and then shiny okay if anybody needs to leave early um you'll have to ask or negotiate with your fellow book readers uh, <laughs> if you need to move up or down a place okay <laughs> So, Eleanor, whenever you're ready, if you would like to start reading. Uh, I'm ready. Can you hear me? Okay. Siri, still crouching in the dust, waddled on bent legs to the side of the carriage, fast, farthest from the battlefield. He unfastened the door of the carriage, the two men were far too much occupied with the quarrel to notice anything, took the lamb in his arms, and, still stooping, carried the sleeping baby a dozen yards along the road to where a stile led into a wood. The others followed, and there among the hazels and young oaks and sweet chestnuts, covered by high, strong, scented brake fern, they all lay hidden the angry voices of the men were hushed at the angry voice of the red and white white lady, and after a long and anxious search, the carriage at last drove away. My only heart, said Siri, drawing a deep breath at the sound of wheels, at last died away. Everyone does want him now, and no mistake, that some yard has done us again, tricky brute. For any sake, let's get the kid safe home. So they peeped out, and finding on the right hand only lonely white 